Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and I just got back from garage sailing earlier today, and I bought, of all things, another 2-inch micrometer, not that I don't have enough, and those are just my steric 2-inchers, but uh, for 5 bucks, couldn't turn it down. But what is unique about this one, and it's a Fowler brand, and it's made in Japan. It's uh, old enough to where it's made in Japan. We used to make fun of things that were made in Japan when we were kids, but uh, now we realize that most of the Japanese things are pretty high quality. Anyway, it's a Fowler, and it came with uh, a little adjusting wrench. No standards, but I, I have several standards. But what is unique about this and at first I thought maybe it was just modified by the owner, but we have reduced uh, diameters here on the spindle and the anvil to allow you to get into a tight place, and I'm, I'm sure it came from a factory because this has been ground and, and marked uh, with, with some numbers, control number or whatever. Maybe it was used for inspecting, but... Uh, I think this can be a nice little micrometer, but it needs some work, and let me show you what I'm going to do. By the way, this micrometer will read in tenths of a thousandths, too, as evidenced by the uh, extra graduation, the vernier graduations on the back of the uh, barrel. Now, when you buy a two-inch micrometer, or uh, sh yeah, just a two-inch micrometer. You're going to find that you might get a, a round standard or one of these uh, straight ones, uh, cylindrical. I prefer these, but for what I'm going to do here, because of the small anvils on here, I'm going to use a one-inch gauge block and uh, show you the, the shortcoming of this uh, particular micrometer. So let me adjust that, and I'm holding this, whoops, in my uh, Mauser micrometer stand here, which is a quite handy way for, especially for this uh, demonstration. So there we go, we're right on, uh, and I have a ratchet stop here. It has a lock as well. Need to back that off to get it out. Now let's uh, get a close-up of the reading. This micrometer was a few thousandths off when I first checked it, and I already zeroed it out using the, the little uh, wrench that came with it, and I think you all know how to do that, but I'll, I'll run through that in, in just a second here. But what I don't like about this micrometer, and I have had this happen to other micrometers, but uh, never a steric, notice that the vertical line on the barrel is partially covered. Let me back it off here, and you'll see that it now starts to appear. I like to be able to see that line when it's zeroed out and it's hidden. So, using the micrometer as the gauge itself, you can see that when I back it out, oh, five, six, let's say seven thousandths, that graduation is clearly visible. So I want to adjust this by seven thousandths, and in this case it's going to involve a little machining, and it can be done by two methods. But let me take this micrometer apart real quick and, sh and go over the parts, in case you're not familiar with the parts. And I have done this in another video a long time ago about micrometers. Micrometers have really five major parts, but there's really more than that, but I, I used to teach just the five parts to the high school kids, so we got the frame, the fixed anvil, the spindle, the barrel, and the thimble. And of course there's a thread in here, and that's 40 threads per inch. If you do the math, you'll know why. And in this case it also has the lock and the ratchet uh, uh, adjustment for to check the tightness and then there's there's some other parts here too this little uh, threaded collar which has some notches on there uh, can be tightened or loosened and that uh, determines how tight the thread is and how hard you have to to rotate this if, if it's too tight you can back this off a little bit if it's too loose Latrec you can turn it in and it, it will tighten a little bit. 
and if I can take that off real quickly you're going to see that there is a uh, a split in there and that gets compressed almost like a collet and those are very precision threads you may or may not have made that adjustment on your micrometers in the past and be sure and use a little oil on the thread and on the spindle when you assemble them and for best results use sterret tool and an instrument oil catalog number 1620 what I in intend to do to rectify this situation is chuck this up in the lathe and I'm going to machine off of the end here on the barrel if I can get a pointer here I'm going to machine six or seven thousandths off of the end here and I'm going to show you the setup and how I can get exactly five or six thousandths uh, machined off of that and I'm not going to take this apart anymore but let me show you an alternate way of doing that as well I removed the satin chrome barrel and uh, of course you look on the back side there's your vernier scale an alternate way of rectifying this situation would be to put this in a collet probably not a three jaw chuck and machine just six thousandths off the end here where my finger is you could put it on the belt sander but uh, I don't like that idea and you would not be in control of how much you're removing now how is this held onto a fowler micrometer and that little hole there is used for zeroing out as you well know with uh, the little spanner wrench but on this micrometer I don't think sterrets are made the, the same but when you install the, uh, the barrel it simply pushes on and there's a friction type of uh, oh, springy copper device here that that uh, gives you a tight fit now if you remove this this would slide on and off way too easily and you want this to be on there pretty firm so uh, th that's how they went ab about manufacturing this I'm not sure I like that it looks kind of cheap but I suppose it's good you can see these splits here a little bit better now that I've got the, the barrel off and what this uh, tightening device will do it simply collapses the thread a little bit I'm gonna put that back together off camera because that that's not the way I intend to uh, to fix this problem naturally on reassembly I lost the adjustment here so let me adjust it back to zero and that's going to be done with the little spanner and I showed you that hole a moment ago and I, all I need to do is get the uh, the spanner in the hole if I can and then I'm going to rotate the uh, thimble until it lines up right there so it's in adjustment but remember now I want to take off five six seven thousandths take the standard out so that that line shows up and it isn't covered or, or buried now that may not bother you but that, that is a a real problem for me to not be able to see that actually four thousandths would be enough which is really very little two or three or four hairs all right let's show you the setup for that in order to hold this on the atlas lathe it would be ideal to hold it right here but in a collet but that's an odd size I don't have a collet that size so I'm going to hold it by the knurl but in order to hold it by the knurl I want to protect the knurl and I'll do that with a piece of aluminum it could be copper or lead that's a little more than I would like to extend out of the chuck 
in order to uh, uh, machine this off, but it's going to be such a light cut and such a minimal amount, I don't believe I'm going to have any problem with vibration. I do not like the idea of chips getting in around this thread, so, so I believe I'll just stuff that with cotton or, or paper or something before I put it in the chuck, and then I'll meet you over at the Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathe, and I intend to take five or six thousandths off of the end of this thimble. Now let's take a look at the setup, and this is my smaller three-jaw chuck, which is quite an accurate one on the Atlas lathe, and I've already gripped the work on the knurl, protecting it again with the, the soft aluminum, and I changed my uh, strategy here, instead of using cotton or paper in there, which didn't work very well, I've got a little uh, piece of uh, brass tubing, the hobby tubing, about two inches long, and that's slid all the way in there and taped right here. That'll protect the thread and allow me to blow that out to uh, remove any debris or chips. In the Alorus tool holder I have a, a facing tool, I guess you would call it. And it's squared up, it's on center, and if you will notice here I've got the compound turned at 90 degrees, and I've removed the backlash here. I'm up against the work, just barely, just kissing the work. Locked the carriage right here, zeroed out the uh, collar here on the compound. Now when I turn it on, I'm simply going to feed it in with the compound six thousandths. Now that's not very much, and you might not even hardly see a shaving when that comes off. You know what, I just changed my mind again, and I sure have been changing my mind quite a bit, but uh, look at the setup here. I've got the little uh, fake Noga indicator I held on to the bed, the flat bed of an Atlas lathe with that magnet. I've got a, a mighty mag here, and the plunger of the indicator is up against that, and I'm zeroed out. So I'm actually going to watch the indicator to move my six thousandths rather than the collar here because I believe that'll be more accurate. But either way would work. You know there's so many different ways of making a setup. And that is one of them. And here we go. I've only got one shot at this and if I ruin it I'm out the five dollars. And I'm going to take a little jeweler file to that. I feel a bit of a burr, and I'll do that off of, of a camera. But just a, a little bit of a, a chamfer on there, and it's so much easier to do that while it's still in the lathe than at the bench. Sometimes the setup takes so much longer than the actual machining, which was what? Five seconds? So off comes the protection, and I did blow this out already, and I used a little file to take that burr off, just a little jeweler's file, and there wasn't much of a burr. Now I can take this off, and I am assured that that thread is clean, and of all things I got a little bit of adhesive here from that tape, so I'm going to take some thinner and get that off, use the steroid oil, on the thread and assemble it and let's see how it looks. Just a little bit of a sidetrack here. I bought this Sterrett mic last summer at a flea market in Wisconsin for I think also five dollars but it's one of the nicer ones. It's got the carbide and it looks so nice and pristine doesn't it? But when you flip it over, well rather than flip it over I'm just going to turn the spindle here and you can see the tremendous corrosion from being improper, improperly uh, stored and I have cleaned that up, it was rustier when I got it and you can see, well it looked like that what you see up by the anvil when I bought it 
but those are pits and you can never get pits out you can only get the uh, the high high spots out not the the soft uh, the uh, low spots other than that it's a good micrometer but you want to take care to always have that oiled so it doesn't get stuck in the frame and I've had that happen and also uh, when storing micrometers get uh, you shouldn't store them with the anvils touching you should always back it off if you're not going to use them for a long time and then everything should be lightly oiled or you'll end up with that all right back to the real thing now that's why I, I had to take that adhesive off here because that would be very sticky let me uh, go ahead and assemble this now I've already oiled it and in it goes and make sure that you have your your locks unlocked as you uh, assemble the micrometer all right it's reassembled and calibrated and checked with the one inch gauge block and it lines up nicely now remember that this is showing up on your uh, monitor much larger than what it is in real life or that you can see with the naked eye now some are going to say you didn't do anything different it's the it's the same or you didn't need to mess with it so I, I know I'm going to get some arguments out of people but to me at this point it's a little bit easier to read to see that vertical line in other words at least three quarters of the vertical line is exposed when it is zeroed out but even if you disagree with what I did and thought it was senseless or nonsensical at least you got a little idea what the micrometer looks like inside and, and uh, how to care for it, how to lubricate it, how to calibrate it, and so on. I hope you liked the video. Be sure and watch my 700 other videos. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.